Here's what's coming from Friday the 13th in 2024. How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is my channel where I talk about all my favorite horror movies with a healthy, healthy focus on slashers. In today's video, I was going to cover all three of the big franchises, Friday, Nightmare, and Halloween, but there's enough news in each movie franchise where I could kind of split it into three videos. So look forward to the other two very soon. As far as Friday the 13th goes, the last time I did a video was in October and there have been a few developments since then. New people have entered the ring on wanting to work on the movie movies and there's been some updates around the Crystal Lake TV show. So I'm splitting this into two parts, the TV show and the movie. You're going to want to watch both of them because there have been updates on both sides of the fandom franchise. I don't know. They're doing a TV show. They're doing a movie. That is awesome. That's what we need to hear. Just to get you up to speed on the series, it's called Crystal Lake and it's most likely coming out this year in 2024. Adrian King, who played Alice in the original to Friday the 13th, she's coming back to be in this show and she keeps posting pictures on Instagram where she puts the hashtag coming 2024 and then I guess she gets in trouble because she always deletes it but yeah this show is probably coming in 2024 and it's interesting because it's a joint partnership between Universal and Peacock and A24 so it's not really their usual team up of Blumhouse who we'll talk about in the movie section it's just a new thing that they're doing for this TV series it makes a lot of sense because last year uh, A24 was talking about how they lost a ton of money on Bo is Afraid this all really bubbled up when the Halloween rights bidding war happened where A24 was really going for it, Miramax was going for it, and then Miramax kind of won out in the end and got a movie and a TV show deal done with whoever owns the rights, Trankus, I guess at the time. But A24 said they need to start making some commercial movies, getting their spin on franchise fare out there so that they can fund the weirder stuff that they've been putting out for years at this point, which I think is a smart move, right? Like build up your reserves of cash doing things that the masses want to see and then still fund those small movies that like cinephiles want to go check out in the theaters. But yeah, the guy behind the show is Brian Fuller. He did Hannibal and I think some of American Gods, but Hannibal is what I want to focus on. I've said it a million times on this channel, but if you haven't seen that show, you should really check it out. It's got really cool slasher elements to it. It was a Fox network TV show, but it really feels more like an FX level show. Mads Mikkelsen is the best Hannibal ever and it sucks. It got canceled right when they were about to cover Silence of the Lambs. But yeah, it's a great show. It should give you a lot of confidence in his ability to tackle Friday the 13th. Going back to Adrian King, who played Alice in the first two Friday the 13th, I'm really curious how big of a role she's going to have in this show, because right now, it seems like she has a huge role in it. The two tweets she put out were her meeting specifically with Brian Fuller alone, and then she met with the entire writing room, so she's obviously being involved in the creation process of this. Then you also have to consider that she played Alice, the protagonist of the first Friday the 13th, and she does get killed in the second one, but she is important to the franchise, right? And she's the only cast member of this show that's been announced up until this point. So I don't know if I'm reading into it too much, but it really does seem like she is going to be important to this series. As for who she could be playing, maybe it's Pamela Voorhees. That would be a little weird though, because she was a final girl in the first movie. So it'd be a little bit of a weird flip seeing her switch sides and become the serial killing mom who's upset that her kid got killed. But I think she could probably handle it. And that might actually work because if it is going to be a pre requel as it's been called or whatever the hell, Brian Fuller said about it. You need Pamela Voorhees in the TV show, so maybe bringing her back to play that character would be smart. She could also be playing that classic older character like that Lin Shea plays and everything where when the kids uh, are being attacked by Jason, they're like, oh, someone survived an encounter with Jason way back in the 1980s. So they go ask her how to beat him. And then begrudgingly, she tells them about like one way that she heard might work to kill Jason or something like that. And then the third way I thought she could maybe come back is if this show is going to do a split timeline type of thing where half of the show takes place in the modern day or maybe even the 90s or the early 2000s and then half of the show is a flashback to the first couple of movies or leading up to the first couple of movies so you could kind of bounce back and forth between episodes and then you could have her playing Alice as if she was never killed in the second movie and she survived Jason and could kind of talk to the kids about him in the future like in the
the modern day or in the 90s or whenever it would be taking place. And then it could bounce back in time and you could cast someone younger in that role. And then you could have a split killer scenario where she's the killer in the past and then Jason, like adult Jason as we know him with the hockey mask and everything, he's the killer in the modern day scenario, like the future forward version, which could be pretty cool because we do know that every episode of this show is going to have bodies dropping. Brian Fuller confirmed that multiple times, which is exactly what I wanted to hear, right? Like when I heard A24 was doing a Friday the 13th series, I was like, great, a lot of talking, not a lot of killing, some weird psychological drama, and Jason's gonna be a depression monster. But no, it really seems like they're doing this right, which I'm happy about. As far as the writing team goes, it's like a hive mind of people who have worked with Brian Fuller in the past. They have tons of great credits under their name. And we did learn that Kevin Williamson is going to uh, write one episode at least of this show. And I think we should just keep that to one episode because as much as I love him, like a lot of his movies are some of my favorite movies ever. I don't need Scream to be the voice of Friday the 13th. They're very distinct. They're different things. Kevin Williamson is good at writing the protagonist style characters that you want to survive. Not so much the ghost face angle. His scripts don't traditionally focus on the killer as much as the main character. So when you're talking about Friday the 13th, I want the focus to be squarely on the killer, whether that is Pamela Voorhees or Jason Voorhees. Like focus on them. That's not really what I find in Kevin Williamson's work. So let's keep it a one episode there. Brian Fuller's been all over the place when talking about this show, but what I've been able to figure out by reading a bunch of different interview snippets that he's put out over the past year or so is that he's calling it a pre-requel. So like what it's going to do is build up to the events of the first movie. So it's going to spell out Jason's childhood and everything like that and show maybe him dying and how the events that led up to that actually happened. Then it's going to build up and focus on the original movie, Friday the 13th. And then it's going to move into the sequels like part two and part three. I think that's really cool. I'm excited about that. I think things could have changed over time, obviously, just because it's been so long since he's been doing interviews about this, but I want to see adult Jason and whatever happens, right? Like if they're going to focus on the Pamela Voorhees angle, that's great and all, but I, I just like, it's been way too long since we've had Jason Voorhees as a killer in one of these movies. And it, I think people who are going to tune into this want to see Jason. They don't necessarily want to see Pamela Voorhees as the main killer. So hopefully the whole like pre-requel part where they're focusing on building up to the first movie or doing the events of the first movie, hopefully they can rewrite it in a way where Jason is an adult faster and worked into the plot a lot faster than he was in the actual franchise. Because I get it, like you look at the history of Friday the 13th, it took, you know, three movies to get to the Jason that we all know and love. But the point is that's the Jason that we all know and love. And we've seen this story before, so we don't need to spend a whole bunch of time building up to what we already know. Because at the end of the day, it's a very simple story, right? Like the mom was upset that her kid drowned because counselors weren't watching him. She goes and kills the counselors. It turns out he's alive, then upset that his mom was killed and he's like an immortal zombie who murders counselors. It's like very simple. It's nothing you need to cover over like six seasons of TV. I'd say that's about three episodes worth of backstory. This video is sponsored by Fume. Cold turkey might be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And I'm not talking about something crazy like jumping into cold water either. I'm talking about today's sponsor Fume and how they look at this problem in a different way. Not every bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air product that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of flavored chemicals, Fume uses all natural flavored air. You get it, instead of bad Bad, fume is good. It's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. Basically, it fills the void in a natural guilt-free way. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is made with magnets and adjustable parts that allows you to fidget with them. It gives your fingers a lot to do, which makes de-stressing easy when you're getting off of your bad habit. Stopping is something that we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Join fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash Jimmy Champagne or scan the QR code and use the code Jimmy Champagne to get 10% off when you get the journey pack. You can upgrade your journey pack to the Solano to enjoy the premium walnut barrel and the onyx coated mouthpiece that has a smoother finish and still get 10% off. That's tryfum.com and use code Jimmy Champagne to get an additional 10% off your purchase today. What really gets me excited is hearing Brian Fuller say that they have full access to the entire franchise 
is the adult Jason, Camp Crystal Lake, everything that you would want to be in this show. They have access to, which is good because that was the big worry coming out of the lawsuit that like whatever happened, this show would have to split some things up and then Sean Cunningham, whatever he did, would have to take his own things and work with that. But no, they have full access to everything. Adult Jason, Pamela Voorhees, Camp Crystal Lake, all the kills, everything like that. Again, he also confirmed that bodies will be dropping every episode, which is music to my ears. That's what I want to hear from a show like this. And then finally, Tom Savini might be coming back to do some effects on this show, which if that's the case, that's a great reunion for this franchise. And the reason I think he's involved in the effects is because Brian Fuller tweeted out a picture with him and said they're talking like stabby calendar stuff. So if they're putting things on a calendar, that means it's probably for effects work and not consulting. And then also use the Crystal Lake hashtag in the tweet. So that's like pretty ironclad proof if you ask me that Tom Savini will be involved in the effects in some way. Of course, if they do adult Jason, I would love to have Kane Hodder or Derek Mears coming back to play him because I'm I'm not like a ride or die on either of them. I love Kane Hodder for a lot of reasons, but I love Derek Mears because of Holliston and uh, Adam Green's scary sleepover. Just like seeing him interviewed on Adam Green's stuff over the years made me really, you know, love that guy. So I'd like to see either one of them be involved in this franchise going forward. I feel like the trailer for the show has got to be right around the corner. They were writing the show well before the strikes even happened, so it seemed like they were just sitting on the scripts and everything like that. If it does take place during the summer, which I hope it does, like May to August is where I want this to live, uh, I feel like they kind of got to wait till this summer and then it might release towards the fall, which, you know, that's fine. Or they could film it in California like uh, AHS 85 did, and then they don't have to worry about the weather and they can still get that summer camp feel. That could work as well. If that's the case and they do film it like that, I would want it to come out between May and August just because I feel like the perfect setting for Friday the 13th is of course that classic summer camp and what I really want is this to stay a period piece. I talked about earlier that it could be a split story where it's bouncing between time periods. I really want the farthest they get in time to be like the 80s or the early 90s at the farthest just because I feel like that period piece aspect really works for Friday the 13th. So yeah a trailer, a poster, all that stuff has got to be right around the corner. I know the strikes really threw off the marketing and everything like that but I'm assuming that if they haven't shot this show already they're ready to go shoot it and get it out into the wild because that's what really needs to happen with this franchise. The other thing I think we're definitely going to hear about this year is a new Friday the 13th movie. The last time we talked about this was last January there was an update on Bloody Disgusting where Sean Cunningham uh, hired two guys to make three new movies for him and one of them was a Friday the 13th movie and then that just evaporated so I would feel pretty safe saying that's not happening at all anymore and honestly, I feel like the scenario that we're going to see with Friday the 13th is a bigger distributor partnering up with Horror Inc. just to get the name, like, you know, how Universal did with Trankis to get the Halloween name, and then they'll hire someone to work on a new movie, and then they'll all just split up the money when the movie comes out in theaters and inevitably makes hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Like, people want Friday the 13th. Now, what's interesting is that two... Now, what's interesting is that there's two people who have thrown their hat in the ring. The first one of those is Blumhouse, which I know red flags immediately immediately and I completely understand it like I liked Halloween ends but it was different right like it was a different movie it wasn't what people wanted from Halloween and it definitely wasn't the franchise ender that they promised so there's a lot of reasons I think people don't like it and most of them if not all of them are valid but Ryan Turek is the guy giving this quote and if anyone knows Friday the 13th it's him and I think they kind of learned their lesson right like don't get a creator who wants to make art house stuff with a classic franchise maybe give them less creative control over that property like have some checks and balances in place so you follow the rules of that character instead of going so far out of left field like they did with Michael Myers but with that being said here's what Ryan Turek had to say about Friday the 13th he said Jason Blum and I are definitely in agreement that Friday the 13th is the thing we would love to get our hands on I really want to go back to basics you don't need many ingredients for a Friday the 13th film you need summer camp you need campers you need Jason Voorhees in a mask listen I've gone on record saying Halloween is the ultimate slasher film for me that's my favorite slasher film of all time but Friday the 13th is a franchise is one that I just bow down to I love everything about it like like how can you hear that and not think that he would be a good guy to executive produce something like this I think Jason Blum has got too many irons in the fire where he can't really pay attention to everything that's going on but if they do make a Friday the 13th movie like they partner up with Universal or something like that who already has the rights by the way of course because they're putting the Friday the 13th show on Peacock then I think that could turn out really cool with some checks and balances in place of course and Blum 
Blumhouse has proved they can do a period piece style setting with Halloween Kills, for example. They did that great flashback scene that's set during the first Halloween movie, and it is pitch perfect. I said I wanted a new Halloween movie to have that look and feel. I want Friday the 13th to have that look and feel as well. So they already have experience there building out a set like that on a soundstage, so they could probably handle it for Friday the 13th. Anyway, the second person who threw their hat in the ring was Damien Leone, the guy who directed and wrote the first two Terrifier movies. I know people were upset about this initially just because Terrifier is so brutal compared to Friday the 13th that like it feels totally and totally different but just listen what he had to say he said Jason was my favorite slasher since I was a little kid and I think there was a way to I mean my approach would be to keep it in the 80s honestly I would have it take place in the early 80s I would try to make him as scary as possible because I feel like that's something they kind of lost as the movies went along you just start getting too comfortable with these villains and you need to be scared of them again that again just like what Ryan Turek said is the perfect way to talk about Friday the 13th to the point where if he was announced as the director after Terrifier 3, I honestly wouldn't be mad. His stuff is, has really grown on me over the past few years. Like I didn't love the first Terrifier. I went and revisited it and then I liked it more. I love Terrifier 2 in theaters and I'm excited for Terrifier 3. So yeah, I think he could be a good choice as well, but there are plenty of people out there who could handle a Friday the 13th movie, you know? But yeah, that's everything happening with Friday the 13th. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape up.